Well, welcome back. We're starting our section uh, 3.1 uh, chapter, chapter 3, and we're starting section 3.1 called Exponential Functions. Now, the way this um, material is broken up, chapter 3.1 is going back and reminding you of exponential and their inverses, uh, log functions, uh, and how to manipulate exponential logs. So they do a little bit of algebra review, and then they also tie that with some limit aspects of the calculus in chapter 3.1 and 3.2. Then we move on and start taking derivatives of these exponential and log functions in chapter 3.3 and so forth. So um, the way we're breaking this up is I'm making a special video for you guys, one of my older videos of um, the review of exponentials and logarithms and uh, all the material you need to know from the pre-calculus college algebra days of the remote review material. But so when we go to section 3.1 and cover it in class in 3.2, we will actually be focusing on uh, mostly limits. We'll do a little bit of algebra review, but we're mostly going to focus on the limits, and then that leads us into the calculus and stuff, So because this is a calculus course, not a college algebra pre-calculus course. So let's start with this guy. Now, exponential functions. Remind yourself that exponential function is a function that has a variable in the exponent. So a to the x is like an exponential function. So when you're doing one of these limit problems, let's just go through our limit laws here, and then we'll apply these a little bit later. So if I take the limit as, x, as r approaches x of a to the r, so we're going to replace r with x, first rule of limits, plug in a number, I'm going to get a to the x. So limits with exponentials are going to work the same way with the limits of all the other good stuff. Now, if a is greater than 1, and we have a base greater than 1, and we take the limit as x approaches infinity of a to the x, well, this is a, a base bigger than 1 raised to the infinity. Remember, a power means multiplying it out that many times. So if you've got a number bigger than 1, multiply it out an infinite number of times, you're going to get an infinity. However, when I take the limit as x approaches negative infinity of a to the x, this is a to the negative infinity. And because negative exponents from an algebraic property, negative exponents are put on the bottom, a to the negative infinity would be the same as 1 over a to the infinity, and 1 over infinity goes to 0. So a to the negative infinity is 0, a to the positive infinity is infinity, when the base is bigger than 1. However, if we change the base between 0 and 1, if I take the limit as uh, x approaches infinity of a fractional base, a number between 0 and 1 raised to a power, if we take a fraction of a fraction of a fraction of a fraction to multiply it out, that'll go to 0. However, if I take the limit as x approaches negative infinity, of a to the negative infinity, where a is a fractional base, that would actually blow up to infinity. Also, some more definitions here. This is how e, that natural number 2.71828 that you guys have played with many times before, actually comes from. If I take the limit as x approaches 0, and officially it's supposed to be on the plus side, of 1 plus x raised to the 1 over x, so this is the 1 over x is a power, you actually get e out of this thing. And that's going to help us out later on. Also, since e, which is number 2.71828, yada, 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 when I take the limit as x approaches infinity, well, e to the infinity, I'm going to get infinity. It follows this rule up here. And when I take the limit as x approaches negative infinity of e to the x, e to the negative infinity, since e is 2.718, number base bigger than 1, when you go to negative infinity, you get 0. So e to the negative infinity is 0. So let's just practice a few problems that are very similar to some of those uh, practice quiz things you have to do before we get started with this stuff. First problem is a classic exponential equation. Let's solve this thing. Solve the equation. 3 to the x equals 1 ninth. Well, this is one of our simpler exponential equations because you can clean it up a wee bit. For example, 1 ninth. You can break down 9 in similar base in terms of 3's because we've got an exponential equation 3 to the x. So I'm really focused on the base 3 here. But 9 is actually 3 squared. So I can write this as 1 over 3 squared. And I don't like stuff on the bottom, so I can play exponential games, and that's going to come back and hone us a way bit too. When I have stuff on the bottom, I can bring it to the top, but when I bring it to the top, I've got to make the exponent negative. So in other words, 3 to the x would have to be equal to 3 to the negative 2, because 3 to the negative 2 is the same thing as 1 over 3 squared, and 1 over 3 squared is 1 ninth. And here's the rule about uh, like bases and solving for exponents. When the bases are equal, that means the exponents have to be equal. So therefore, x has to be equal to negative 2. Now, this was a nice equation because I could write my uh, constant over here as a base 3, so it was easy to solve for. That being said, 
Take a look at this next equation. Solve the equation 8 raised to the 4x plus 1 equals 3. Now there's no way of writing 3 in terms of a base 8, so this isn't going to be like one of these problems. And again, it review, we're working on uh, the review part. I want to solve for uh, a variable in the exponent. Anytime I'm trying to solve for a variable in the exponent where I cannot write it as the same base, there's only one thing in the universe that solves for exponents, and that's logarithms. And remember, we have two different kinds of logs that we focus on, especially when we're trying to calculate an answer. We have uh, common logs or log base whatever, and we also have log base E's, natural logs. So we've got natural logs and common logs, or we can actually choose any base we want. So there's a couple of different ways I can solve this guy, and I'm going to actually show you both ways. So the first way is this. I'm actually going to solve for x by using my log properties. All right, and one of my log properties is this. The log of base a of a raised to the x actually equals x. So if I want to kill off this eight, base uh, 8 here, I've got 8 raised to the 4x plus 1 equals 3. So 8 raised to the 4x plus 1 equals 3. Remember, what I do to one side, I can do to the other. I can actually take the log of base 8 of both sides. What I do to one side, I do to the other. Perfect legal math move. And because of this, one of our beautiful properties of logarithms, the log base a of a raised to the x end up canceling. You get just the exponent. So here, the log base 8 of 8 to the 4x plus 1, the base and the exponential cancel, you're left with 4x plus 1 due to this property here, equals the log base 8 of 3. This is nothing but a number that's on your calculator. Okay. And therefore, treat them just like a number, solve for x. Solving for x, I would subtract 1 from both sides. These are not like terms, so I don't get to really kind of combine them. I just write it as log base 8 of 3 uh, minus 1. And then I'm going to divide both sides by 4. And this gives me my solution. x is equal to the log base 8 of 3 minus 1 divided by 4. And that is one way I could have solved this thing. Okay. Another way I could have solved it, if I wanted to quote unquote use my calculator, is this. I could have done this. 8 raised to the 4x plus 1 equals 3. Now, it depends on how they ask the question. If they ask me to calculate a solution with 4 or 5 or 10 decimal places or whatever the case may be, they wanted the decimal answer. That means I want to use my calculator. So I'm going to show you how to do this problem where it's easier to type in on my calculator than this particular answer. Well, remember, when it comes to your calculator and you're dealing with logarithms, you've got two different kinds of log buttons. You've got the LOG, log, that's log base 10, LOG, and LN, that's log base E, log base 2.71828. So it depends on what kind of numbers in your problem. If you've got E's in the problem, you want to use natural logs. If you don't have E's in the problem, well, then you want to use the common log. So since there were no E's in this particular problem, I would, if I wanted to calculate my answer, well, rule of thumb is I could use either kind of log, natural log or common log. It really wouldn't have mattered. But my rule of thumb is this. If there's an E in the problem, I definitely want to use a natural log. If there's not an E in the problem, I'll use the common log. So. What you do to one side, I do the other. Now, this is log of uh, four, 8 to the 4x plus 1 equals the log of 3. Now, we didn't write a base down here. Remember, if you've got a log that does not have a base, like on our calculator, that is the same thing as log base 10. It's called the common logarithm, common log, log base 10. So this is understood to be log base 10, but this is the button on my calculator. And we had another property, which was this. The log base A of N raised to the C, that's equal to C log base A of N. When I'm taking the log of something to an exponent, log property says exponents get to pop out front. So I'm taking what I do to one side, I do to the other. It's still got a variable in the exponent, which means I can use logs on, log to get rid of those uh, bases, bring down those exponents. So I take the common log of both sides, and my exponent gets to pop out front. So I get 4x plus 1 times the log of 8 equals the log of 3. Okay, And now I want to solve for x. To solve for x, I would, now this, remember, log of 8 is nothing but a number. I would divide by the log of 8 on both sides because it's being multiplied. I want to move it to the other side, so I'll do the opposite. I'll divide. This cancels. 
leaves me with 4x plus 1 equals the log of 3 divided by the log of 8. Now I want to solve for x, so I'm going to subtract 1, getting x by himself. This gives me 4x equals the log of 3 over the log of 8 minus 1. And then I'm going to divide by 4. It gives me my solution. The log of 3 over the log of 8 minus 1 all over 4. But you look at this answer going, well, that's pretty nasty. Yeah, but that's the answer the way I need it. Because this answer and this answer are the same thing. This is a formula called the change of base formula. You could rewrite log base 8 of uh, 3 as log of 3 over the log of 8 using the common log button. But the reason why I'm showing you this is because, so I could type it in on the calculator. To type this on the calculator to get a decimal answer, I've got to parentheses around my numerator. So parentheses, it'll be the log of 3, close parentheses for the log, divided by the log of 8. Okay, that's going to be that number there. Then I'm going to subtract 1, minus 1, close parentheses for my numerator. Then I'm going to divide that by 4, and I end up getting the answer x is equal to negative 0.1179, so forth and so on. So there's where my solution is coming from. So there's two different ways of uh, doing the particular problem, uh, solving this stuff. And you really, which one? Well, they're both right. Don't get me wrong here. But um, if they just want to write the answer in terms of a solution in an exact format, this is the way to go. If they wanted to write it as a decimal format, then you actually want to use either the natural log or common log button so you can convert it quickly to a decimal on your calculator. Okay. Well... Some of these other problems that are on your quiz that I'm trying to help you get you started with are problems like these. So I'm going to blow this up. You guys can see a little better here. This is those limit problems. Here's where calculus really begins at. I want to take the limit as x approaches infinity of 3e to the negative 2 times x. Well, the first rule of limits is plug in a number. So this would be 3e to the negative 2. The idea is times infinity. Let the autofocus take over here. It takes a few seconds to get going here. All right, so all I did was plug in infinity, but you have to do the math. Follow your nose. What is negative 2 times a positive infinity? Negative 2 times a positive infinity is a negative infinity. So this is 3 times e to the negative infinity. All I'm doing is following my nose to figure out what's going on here. And now this is e to the negative infinity. And according to our limit laws, when I take the limit as x approaches negative infinity of e to the x, this is pretty much e to the negative infinity, what is it equal to? e to the positive infinity is infinity, e to the negative infinity is 0. e to the negative infinity is 0. So this is equal to 3 times 0, and 3 times 0 is 0. So my solution is 0. But the trick, first rule of limits, is plug in a number, but you've got to use your limit laws to figure out what it's doing to so, take a look at this one here. Uh, this one here has a couple of different ways you guys can look at this problem and do it. I'll show you the, the, the way we want you to do it. And then I'm going to show you the easy way of looking at it. All right, so this problem here. Take the limit as x approaches infinity of 3 times e to the x divided by 5 times e to the x plus 12. Well, first rule of limits, plug in a number. So here I go, plug in a number. This will be 3e to the infinity over 5e to the infinity plus 12. Well, just like you said before, let's go back to our limit laws. When I take the limit as x approaches infinity of e to the x, e to the infinity is infinity itself. So e to the infinity is infinity. So this will be 3 times infinity over 5 times infinity plus 12. Let's follow our nose. 3 times something really big is something really big. Divided by 5 times something really big is something really big plus 12 more is even bigger. It's infinity over infinity. And if you remember, infinity over infinity is one of our indeterminate laws. Now, I'm going to show you the correct way of showing your work to be able to get this to solution to this problem. Then you guys can catch a pattern on it. So, here's my problem again. So, it's infinity over infinity. Indeterminate rule, indeterminate. So, we've got to sit there and do some algebra. So the original problem is the limit as x approaches infinity of e, 3 times e to the x divided by 5 times e to the x plus 12. Now, anytime I got this infinity over infinity, we had that prob, uh, chapter 1.6 where we had to do 
or you know, basically the degree of the denominator stuff. And this is kind of working the same deal. The trick is going to be this. Whatever I do to the numerator, I have to do to the denominator. And I'm going to multiply by 1 over e to the x on both sides. Now, I wonder why. And you're beginning to see that it's 1 over the degree of the denominator. But this is not a degree. This is an exponential function. But it's following the same path. You'll see why in a second. So here's the trick right here. Multiply by 1 over e to the x. And when you do that, you're going to multiply 3 times e to the x times 1 over e to the x. Still a limit problem. Keep writing limit. The e to the x is canceled. I'm left with 3 divided by. Here I'm going to distribute. So this will be 5 times e to the x times 1 over e to the x is 5. Plus 12 times uh, 1 over e to the x is 12 over e to the x. So it cleans up nicely. But here's the real deal. Now this is an individual fraction right here. And I have an e to the x in the denominator. I want to bring him to the top. But he's an exponential. So when I bring an exponent up to the top, I have to make the exponent negative. So this is 3 divided by 5 plus 12 e to the negative x. Doing my algebra on uh, exponents here. I mean, when I divide by a fraction, I want to bring it to the top. I've got to make the exponent negative. Now the reason why I did that was this. We have a property. When I take the limit as x approaches uh, negative infinity of e to the x, in other words, e to the negative infinity, I get 0. So when I plug in infinity here, that, that negative makes it uh, negative infinity. So this would be, when I plug it in, 3 divided by 5 plus 12 times e to the negative infinity. Negative times infinity is negative infinity. And we just said with our limit laws, e to the negative infinity is 0. So this gives me 3 divided by 5 plus 12 times 0. And that will give me uh, 3 over 5 plus 0, which makes my solution 3 fifths. And if you go back and look at the original problem, it's just like we had when we did those uh, limits as x approaches infinity of polynomials over polynomials. When the degree of the top equals the degree of the bottom, or they have the same kind of function, the answer was always that ratio of the leading coefficient. So you can kind of look at these problems and tell what the answer is, but this is the work to show you how you get the right answer. This is what we're looking for. So you're, you want to get rid of e to the uh, x's when you take the limit as x approaches infinity and try to get e to the negative x's in there because those guys go to zero and not start knocking off terms. So that's why I multiply by 1 over e to the x divided by 1 over e to the x, which is a ratio of 1, which doesn't change my problem. Well, I hope this has been helpful to help you guys out with those quizzes and get you started on this interesting chapter of exponentials and logs, the limit properties, and then later on we'll get into the derivatives. But remember, the algebra behind this, well, the logarithms and exponentials and the stuff, those things I'm going to make a special video for you guys to go over because it's a prerequisite to the class. But I know for quite a few of you people, it's been a while since you guys looked at logs and exponentials. So you may need a little refresher and I'll create a special video to refresh your memory on that stuff. So see you guys next time.